brought to you by Jays. Making the switch to EFI? Well, that can be intimidating enough, but throw in the endless array of connectors, pins, and crimping tools, and you'll be left scratching your head. Here at Holly, we feel your pain, and we want to help. After all, we're car enthusiasts too. With so many manufacturers using such a wide variety of connectors and sensors, it can be hard to keep up with them all, let alone trying to remember which crimping or depinning tool that you'll need to use for which design. In this video, I'll show you how to identify the different connectors that are found on your LS harness. I'll also show you what tools are needed to depin them and how to properly crimp them. Let's start with the Holly EFI J connectors. You'll find these connectors used on Holly Avenger, Terminator, HP, Dominator, and our Terminator X ECUs. The technical name for the terminal design used in these connectors is the Tyco Super Seal 1.0. I really like this design, mainly because releasing the terminals from the connector body is super simple. Notice the two small white tabs on one side and a larger white tab on the opposite side of the connector. To release the terminals, simply push in on the larger tab with a small screwdriver or punch, and the two smaller tabs should now be protruding from the connector body on the opposite side. The locking tab holding the pins in is now disengaged, and you'll be able to remove, replace, or swap any of the pins within the connector by simply pulling them out. A firm tug may be required to remove them. Once you have all your pins back in place and exactly where you want them, press down on both the protruding tabs until they are flush again with the connector body. They are now locked in place. To properly crimp the Super Seal 1.0, you'll need a terminal for the wire gauge that you're using as well as a crimping tool. Crimping tools can be expensive, depending on how fancy you want to get. So if you plan on doing a lot of crimping, I'd suggest buying a pair of Holly crimpers, part number 567-100. These crimpers are super nice since you can swap out the jaws with the ones that allow you to crimp Deutsch, Amp Pin, Amp Lug, Weathertight, and more. If you plan on using these crimpers for our ECU pins though, you'll first remove the support assembly that's attached to the side of the crimper. Begin by stripping approximately 3 16ths of an inch or roughly 5 millimeters of insulation from your wire. Place your terminal into the appropriate slot found in the crimper. Once it's in place, lightly squeeze the terminal to hold it in place. Slide the wire into the terminal, then lock the tabs to keep the terminals in place. With our Super Seal 1.0 connectors, we include these dummy pins. You simply put them in place of any open hole that you may have in your ECU connector. That way you keep any contaminants out. And don't forget to lock the tab when you're finished and all the wires and plugs are in place. One of the most popular connectors found on the LS harness is the Delphi Metropac 150 connector. It's real similar to the GT150, just slightly larger in size. Typically, LS engines use the Metropac 150 connector for things like the cam and crank sensor. They also use them for the injector harness to main harness, the input-output connector, and the coil injector harness to main harness connections. To crimp the Metropac 150s, I'll be using these crimpers, part number 567-102. These crimpers can be used to crimp weather pack and the Metropac 150, as well as the 280 terminals. You'll find two jaws for crimping anywhere from 14 to 20 gauge wires and two circular jaws for crimping the seals. Once again, the more you spend on the tool, the better quality crimp you're more than likely to get. Start by installing the appropriate size seal onto your wire. The seals are color coded to work with different wire gauges. Make sure that the ribs are away from the terminal. Strip approximately 3 16 of an inch of insulation from the wire. You don't have to twist the wire, you can just leave it as strands. Insert the terminal into the crimper and line up the terminal with the appropriate jaws. Insert your wire and squeeze. With most of the low cost crimpers, you'll have to do this process in two steps. Once for the wire and once for the seal. With the higher dollar crimps, they'll do this all in one step. Now we can slide the seal up into the terminal. Then using the appropriate hole in our crimpers, we can crimp the seal. Now we can install our terminal into the connector. The terminal should only be able to go into the connector one way. You'll notice a locking tab on the top of the terminal itself. Make sure the tab is orientated with the lock facing up and pointed towards the connector's locking tab. Then insert the connector until you hear it click. Be sure that the seal is fully seated in the connector hole. That way it prevents any contaminants from entering. Once your terminal and wire is locked into place, you'll need to install the TPA to the back of the connector. 
The TPA, which is short for Terminal Position Assurance, provides strain relief and prevents the terminals from being pulled out of the connector body. To release the Metropac 150 terminals, you'll need a de-pinning tool, or you can use a safety pin or even a paper clip that's approximately 30 thousandths in diameter. Use your de-pinning tool or your fingers to remove the TPA from the back of the connector. The TPA provides strain relief and prevents the terminals from being pulled out of the connector body. Now locate the small square cutout found in the front of the connector near the top of the terminal. You'll find it on the same side as the connector's retaining clip. Insert the de-pinning tool or paper clip into the square cutout and press firmly. The tool should travel a few millimeters, then come to a stop. Once the tool is seated, firmly pull on the wire and terminal to remove it. If you plan to reuse the terminal, be sure to pry up slightly on the locking tab until it's just above the main part of the terminal. This ensures that the terminal will lock back into the connector body once you've reinstalled it. Don't forget to reinstall the TPA and you're done. GM also uses the Delphi GT150 style connector on their LS engines. You can find this style connector used on the coolant temp sensor, throttle position sensor, idle air control motor, oil pressure, fuel pressure, manifold air temp, and knock sensors. The GT150 uses slightly smaller terminals than the Metropac 150 and comes in two designs, a pull to seat or a push to seat design. The GT150 design uses slightly smaller terminals but is crimped just like the Metropac 150. However, it does require a different crimping tool. I found this one online. The GT150 design also uses a TPA to provide strain relief. However, it also has what is referred to as a PLR or primary locking reinforcement. This lock goes on the front of the connector to help secure the terminals. To depin the GT150 push to lock design terminal, you first need to remove the TPA from the back of the connector with your fingers or a small screwdriver. Then you'll need to remove the PLR from the front of the connector. You'll need to separate the PLR from the connector and you can do this with a small knife but I find it works best to use the fingernail on my thumb and middle finger. Place a fingernail on either side just below the base of the POR and pull till it comes off. Now we can see the locking mechanism. Use a small knife or a pick to raise the plastic locking tab up and release the terminal. Be careful that you don't lift it up too far and break the tab. With the locking tab raised, you can now pull on the wire to remove the terminal. When you're installing a new terminal, pay attention to the orientation of the terminal. If you look closely, you'll see a small cutout in the terminal where the tab that we released earlier catches. Make sure that the tab in the connector and the cutout on the terminal are lined up. Then press the terminal and wire into the appropriate slot until it locks. Reinstall your POR to the front of the connector and the TPA to the rear of the connector and you're all done. Most of our newer LS harnesses use the push to seat design, but some older harnesses as well as our smart coils utilize the pull to seat design. The pull to seat GT150 terminals assemble just a bit differently. They don't use a seal crimp to onto the terminal. To assemble, you first have to run the wire through the connector, strip the insulation, then crimp the terminal to the wire. Pull to seat terminals require yet another special crimping tool. This one I found on the internet. To finish the connector, line up the flange on the terminal with the slot in the connector, then pull the wire and terminal back into the connector until it locks into place. Unlike the push to lock design, pull to lock GT150 terminals do not use a PLR or a TPA to secure the terminals. To remove the terminal, you first have to remove the seal from the back of the connector using a pick. Then using a flat release tool like this, slide it between the terminal and the connector body, working from the seal side of the connector. Notice that I place the release tool on the side opposite of the tab in the terminal and the slot in the connector body. Once the tool is in position, push forward and the wire should release from the connector body. You'll find a few other connectors on the harness, such as the Metropac 640. We use that for the power and ground harness, as well as some various connectors for brand specific injectors. I hope this video helps take the guesswork out of your LS harness install. Brought to you by Jay's Fast Delivery. Your source for high performance and quality. Delivering performance since 1960. Jay's.com.